So this is the experiment to investigate the effect on the magnetic flux linkage of varying the angle between a search coil and the magnetic field. You can see here that I've got a search coil. It's a purchase search coil. It's mounted on this um, circuit board, and that's the search coil there. There are 5,000 turns on this one. It's mounted inside a magnetic field. We're using what we call a Helmholtz coil. Often these come part of a Teltron tube kit. They come in pairs quite often. We're just using one of them. You can see the copper wire here, the enameled copper wire. And uh, we're connecting that Teltron tube, Helmholtz, sorry, we're connecting the Helmholtz coil, the coil of wire there, to um, a power pack. We're using AC and we're using four volts from a normal lab power pack. And so that's producing alternating current at approximately 50 hertz. So in this coil here, if I come around here, perhaps you can see the setup a bit more. We've got 50 hertz, um, the current's changing direction 50 times a second, going first one way, then the other. So the special thing about a coil of wire like this, obviously, is that the magnetic field through it, uh, the magnetic field caused by the current moving, um, is uniform in the middle. So it's either pointing in the direction of my finger, going that way, or when the current switches direction, it's pointing the other way, going that way. And so in the middle of this magnetic field that's constantly changing now, it's going from there to there to there to there, we put the search coil. And this search coil is mounted, as you can see here, in exactly the same orientation as is the, the main coil of wire there. So there it is. The changing flux caused by the alternating current in the, in the coil here induces a current to flow in the 5,000 turns of copper wire that's under that tape there. And it depends on what angle that is in the field as to how much is induced and to the EMF that is induced in that coil. So to make that clear, if you look, I've got this mounted on a, um, above a, um, an angle scale here. And at the moment, if I just line that up, you can see that my search coil is at 90 degrees to the field. You see that if I go directly above? 90 degrees to the field. So the field is going that, uh, that way and the coil is orientated that way. They're perpendicular to each other. And if I go over to the oscilloscope here, you can see the trace. It's a bit awkward because of the video refresh rate, but if I do zoom in, you can see the controls on the oscilloscope all set up. Um, with this current setup, it won't be exactly the same for every setup, but you can see I'm just using one channel of input here. My volts per division is on a setting of 0 0.1. That means each square here is worth 0 0.1. My time per division is on 5 milliseconds, which means that each square horizontally is worth 5 milliseconds. My sweep control is set in the calibrate position, and I've judged the level control to keep the signal uh, static just there. You can see any other controls as well. It's just on channel 1, for example, here, and it is actually on the DC setting not the AC setting. So you see this variable signal. That is the induced EMF we're looking at there in the search coil. So in the course of this experiment, you vary the angle and you measure the induced EMF each time. So if I vary the angle, I'll do quite an exaggerated uh, one so you can see an immediate effect. You can see if I turn it so that the angle now is substantially changed in the field, I hope you can see that the EMF has reduced uh, and you can measure the angle using the scale here, and the EMF produced is there. So that is how you set up and do that experiment. If it doesn't work with the, uh, the lab power pack or the setup that you've got, one thing you can try. This uh, lab power pack, of course, will only output 50 hertz. If you want to increase the rate of change of magnetic flux in that coil there, you can just increase the frequency by replacing this power pack with a signal generator where you can turn the frequency up much higher than, um, than 50 hertz. And that should enable you to obtain a, a signal on here, especially if you're trying to use a search coil that perhaps doesn't have 5,000 turns on it. Maybe it has, has less, or you've tried to make a homemade one that doesn't have as many, as many turns. I should just say that inside there, you can't see the coils by the way, but it's very fine copper wire that's wrapped around 5,000 times, quite delicate. 
They do come mounted the other way as well. I've got another one here. I don't know if you can see that it is mounted slightly differently. Uh, and that's quite useful as well because you can obviously mount that at different orientations in the field and get it right in the centre there, which sometimes helps in that investigation. Okay, hope that was helpful.